It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson. Only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning. This is City Beat. I'm Matthew Higgs, and joining me in the studio, as always, is Mayor Dennis Fenske. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. If you have a question you'd like to ask, give us a call at 677-8181. I guess the first question I should ask you, because we weren't on last week, how was your Christmas break? Excellent. Uh, other than the weather, that's all Manitoba experienced uh, with the snowstorms and the cold weather. Uh, but it was a good time to uh, spend time with family and friends, so I'm, I'm hoping that everyone had the same experience and that uh, now that we're into 2017, we're all, uh, all ready to go and uh, get through 2017 safely uh, and uh, go from there. Well, the break's done because on Tuesday it was uh, City Council for the first time this year. And uh, Councillor Duncan Wong, uh, he, he rescinded a resolution that was done before the new year. Explain what resolution w- was rescinded and what now happens to that resolution. Yeah, okay, so uh, as far as process, wh- what uh, Councillor Wong provided was notice to rescind. So the actual uh, um, resolution isn't rescinded until council deals with it. So, uh, process is that you have to serve notice uh, prior to the uh, the next regular meeting. So he served notice that uh, he wanted to rescind a specific uh, resolution dealing with a cost overrun on a capital project at the uh, the land uh, the wastefill uh, the landfill site. And so what will happen is that at the next council meeting that resolution will come forward, or the notice of resolution uh, to rescind will come forward. We'll discuss the merits of of rescinding or not. Council will decide whether whether they want to uh, move forward. Uh, if it's uh, if the motion is defeated, then nothing happens. The the the, mo- the previous motion stands as is. Uh, if it is rescinded, uh, then the council will have to determine an action based on the action from the from the resolution. And what was the resolution again? You said uh, basically it was a cost overrun in regards to the uh, uh, the landfill. Uh, there originally there was a cost estimate based on the amount of. Uh, of uh, a garbage that was buried that had to be removed to get to base clay in order to uh, build a, uh, a dike system or a, or a retention area and it was much deeper than anticipated so there was extra cost in removing that uh, material to get to the base clay. Okay, uh, the snowmobile trails aren't quite open yet and there's still some time away but obviously people want a snowmobile. I mean it's snow, there's a lot of snow out there but uh, um, it's not exactly safe on some areas, and there was actually an accident this past weekend too. Anything about uh, you got to say about uh, that? Yeah, just basically from a safety perspective, uh, like uh, any vehicle, uh, you drive the conditions of the road on the snowmobile and ATVs. You drive the condition of the trail, and so unfortunately, we had an accident uh, south of town uh, over the holiday season where uh, a gentleman suffered a fractured femur, and uh, basically, uh, we need to ensure that uh, you're aware of your surroundings, aware of the trail system. Uh, the trail bikers normally are. Uh, are grooming trails uh, because of the uh, conditions that we have. They haven't been able to groom as much as possible. Uh, so the city trail has been groomed once, and the, uh, the trails heading south uh, to uh, to Payne Lake and beyond have not been groomed uh, on a regular basis. So uh, just be cautious of that, uh, and be, again, be aware of your surroundings and uh, drive safely. And most importantly, don't go on the lakes or rivers. Uh, the 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 lakes are a little uh, because of the cold spell that we've had. The the ice on the lakes is is probably uh, uh, pretty good, but uh, in any case, make sure you uh, check out your your surroundings before there. Uh, specifically, the Burntwood River. The Burntwood River is never stable; it's always moving, and so we would encourage people to stay off the river at all costs uh, because you never know. Uh, one spot may have thick ice, one one spot may not, and uh, again, there's constant uh, current underneath the ice, and if someone does go through, we have had fatalities in the past so um, my advice to everyone is stay off the Burnwood River. Well the uh, city is going through the process of hoping to stop payment of the electricity rate of the light in front of the school because now it's solar LED crosswalk. I'll assume that Hydro will let the city off the hook because of it but I was wondering is there a chance to get reimbursed for the past three months because it's been done since the end of September so is there a chance to get reimbursed for paying the past three months? Yeah that, that will be the intent is that basically we've gone through a cost saving measure in regards to changing uh, the crosswalk to an LED uh, solar uh, initiated power source and so that removes the uh, the need for power from hydro and so uh, it came to our attention that we were being billed for uh, for that specific site so we will ask for a, a rebate on the uh, costs incurred uh, prior to or since the installation of the solar and moving forward uh, no charges to be charged. Uh, question from the public uh, where is the status of increasing the amount of pets per household and what are your thoughts about it? And I think we discussed about this at the city council, actually, right? Yeah, actually, in the uh, in the report that came back from uh, public safety, uh, Councillor Ellis' report, uh, 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 
reported on that uh, the last three months of action. That was discussed at the Public uh, Safety Committee meeting and at the current time status quo uh, was determined to place to, to stay with uh, in regards to the number of pets. So there will be no change to the bylaw in regards to the number of pets allowed. And I believe the bylaw states that there will be two dogs and, and or three cats allowed uh, per household. And the reason why it's status quo is because there was just one animal control person, right? Correct. We, we have one staff person that uh, is in charge of licensing and enforcing the bylaws for that. And so for our community, the size of the community, the number of pets that are in our community uh, was reasonable to, uh, from the committee's perspective, to stay status quo on the bylaw. Uh, the cold weather policy has been in effect for much of December and even this month, I'm, I'm assuming, because it's been very cold these past couple of nights. But according to the statistics that were given at the City Council there, it's uh, only about, <coughs> at most, six people show up to the huts or places for the cold weather policy. Is this considered low for the city? Because I'm just here for the first year, right? Is this considered low? Actually, this isn't considered an improvement. Uh, before uh, we, we had a cold weather policy in place, there were a number of uh, individuals uh, that had to find uh, uh, places to stay uh, in the cold evenings uh, on their own. Uh, we, we saw that as a grave concern to public safety and we uh, ins instilled a, a uh, policy. Uh, that have provided the outdoor rink facilities uh, to the shelter as a way of overflow. Overflow uh, being that the shelter has 24 beds available and at 10 o'clock if they're full then people can register for use of the uh, uh, the outdoor facilities either at the Juniper Park or Eastwood Park and they're staffed by uh, people from the shelter and, and Manitoba Health. And so uh, uh, with the inclusion or the, the expansion of uh, the uh, um, housing on Cree Road uh, the, uh, that took away the the uh, the main users of the facilities and so it decreased because they were provided housing on a regular basis we now are seeing a decrease in numbers for the use of the cold weather policy but it is still in place we still are a leader in the province in regards to opening up public facilities for that purpose and so we're quite proud of that but the, the numbers are down because we've ha provided or uh, the other organizations in the community have provided uh, alternative housing for those at most risk is the city doing their part to make it known that th these uh, facilities are open for that time, though? Absolutely. And we also, whenever it reaches that temperature or close to that temperature, which is uh, 30, 30 or minus 30, or minus 35, uh, our first responders, param fire paramedics, our CSOs and the local RCMP are also doing extra runs around the community. Uh, we know the areas that people tend to uh, to uh, hold out uh, and so we make sure that people are safe. Uh, so we make sure that uh, that we uh, are transporting people to, uh, uh, to safe places when they need it. Uh, the deadline for the budget survey is close to being uh, uh, coming and going. Uh, what will the budget process look like for this month, and where does the city hope to be by the end of it? Uh, so basically, the, the budget survey is out online at thompson.ca. It's also available in hard copy at City Hall and the uh, VRCC uh, at the front desk. Uh, so you can fill it out and turn it into those two uh, locations. Um, or you can email it in uh, to City Hall at thompson.ca as well. Uh, the deadline for submission is January 10th. Uh, that will provide us uh, basic information in regards to the uh, budget uh, process that will continue in January and February. Hopefully we have it wrapped up by the end of February uh, for the budget of 2017 for both uh, capital and operating as well as the utility. Uh, there's a question here. It says, what is the status for the update for, I'm assuming this is what a, a one, it looks like a seven, but update for 911 in Thompson? Because I think we just, the operators all go in Winnipeg, right? Uh, correct. So the, the local numbers in Thompson uh, for fire emergency services is 204-677-7911. Sorry, 7911. For police services, it's 204-677-6911. Uh, if you're on a cell, uh, uh, and you phone 911, you'll be transferred to an MTS operator uh, who in turn will transfer you to ops in, in Winnipeg or Brandon uh, to handle calls like that. So we don't have a dedicated 911 service in Thompson uh, for landlines, but if you're on a cell, uh, it goes through the MTS uh, operator system and uh, is moved forward from there. So the, again, once again, the local numbers to call in regards to fire paramedic is 204-677-7911, and in regards to RCMP is 204-677-6911. Could, oper could there be a process that operators could be coming up to Thompson eventually, or is it going to stay in Winnipeg and Brandon probably? At this point, uh, comms is both in Brandon and Winnipeg, uh, and so uh, we're in discussion about 911 pro province-wide, but at this time, this is the system that's in place. Okay, and the roads have been a 
pretty bit icy for a while now. I got asked if there's a road maintenance vehicle on the roads to make sure it's not a slippery for the traffic out there. Yeah, we have two shifts uh, every day, uh, weekdays that are out. Uh, the Sanders are out uh, five o'clock in the morning. Uh, as the snow falls, we have graders and, and uh, loaders out as well to, to do snow removal. Uh, again, we have a priority system, priority one, two, and three, uh, that uh, when we have a heavy snowfall. And so uh, right now, we're we, because we've got through most of the snow and it's cold weather, uh, basically we're in a sanding process now. And is there like a procedure that goes, is it big, like the main roads first and then goes yeah. to residentials? That's the P123. So priority one is the main arterial roads uh, and emergency roads. Uh, P2 is the ancillary roads and P3 is residential. And last question, since I'm leaving and I'm going down to Brandon, how is the mayor of Brandon, Rick Crest? Is he a good man? He's an excellent man. I actually had a discussion with him. We've uh, we've uh, we've sort of uh, pre -empt or uh, pre uh, prepared the city of Brandon for your arrival, and uh, he's aware of uh, of your comings. And I'm sure that uh, you'll bring a uh, the same professionalism that you brought to the position here. But uh, Rick is looking forward to seeing you and meeting you in regards to uh, uh, radio in in Brandon. Because yeah, when it comes to professionalism, I'm the person that's in the dictionary. That's <laughs> the, I'm the example exactly. Well. Well, you know what? This is the last edition for myself for doing City Beat with you, and it's been a pleasure doing it for the past six months with you, and uh, I'm going to miss you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll miss you, too. <laughs> exactly. Group hug. <laughs> exactly. We talked about a lot of subjects over the last six months, including Pokemon and hockey, so it's been great. Uh, that's it for this edition of City Beat. Make sure to join us every Thursday. I'm not going to be here, but every Thursday at 1130 to find out what's happening around the city and City Hall. For 1029 CHTM, I'm Matthew Higgs. City Beat. We'll be back next Thursday morning at 11.30.